Hello and welcome. This is Hless John, and this is episode 7 of my Java Fundamentals series. This episode will deal with primitive variables. I'll be talking about variable assignment, some Java math, uh, the use of some of the operators, and some more general term coverage. Let me start by looking at a slightly modified Hello World program, and I want to go over some terms that can be used to describe different parts of a Java program. And you will see these throughout your career in the Java world. Statements are the single pieces of a program, and these all end with semicolons. A block. A block is a group of statements, and it's inside of the braces. Uh, there can be more than one block in a single program, and there often is. White spaces. Now, white spaces not only refers to blanks, but it can also be used to refer to tabs and to new lines, and these are also called white spaces. Y spaces are sometimes required to exist in certain specific locations, but mostly Y spaces are used to keep the code looking nice and easily readable. Since this episode is dealing with primitive variables, let me show you how to assign something to a variable using a basic assignment statement. The operator that is used to assign things is the equal sign. In the assignment statement, there is a very specific order in which this has to happen. On the left side, there will be the name of the variable, then the operand equal sign, and then following that will be the literal. An expression or a variable that fits the existing data type that is assigned to the variable can also be used to the right of the equal sign. I've created this sample program. You can find all these sample programs on my website. I've designed it so that number one is equal to zero, number two is equal to four, and number three is an expression that fits with this particular assigned variable, which is an integer. Create and save the file. If you do not wish to do it by hand, you can find a copy of this program again on my website. I would suggest that you copy the name of the class because if you can, copy and paste into command prompt, things go a lot faster. And let me compile and print this out and see what happens. This error is trying to point out that I need to include a concatenation operator to make this work. The concatenation operator is the plus sign. So let me just add that and get rid of this error. Another tip is that if you wish to retype something while the command prompt, F1 should fill in the last line you typed on the command prompt. And there that works. And looking back at the code, I see that it worked just as it was supposed to. Just remember that to combine string literals with other data types, the concatenation operator or the plus sign has to be used. And that is the basics of assignment. Instanced variables can be declared or initialized and then assigned values later. I say instance variables because there are actually three different types or layers of variables. There's the class or static variable that are declared with the word using the word static, which is a keyword in the class, but outside of a method. There are the instance variables that are declared in a class, but are also outside of a method. And then there are the local method variables, which are declared inside of a method. Another tip, if you do any copying or pasting between files in Notepad to Notepad++, sometimes it will show up just as a text file. Remember, you can change it to Java at any time by using the sections under language at the top of Notepad++. This sample program should be looked at as just that, a sample. It is more complicated than a beginner's program, and you shouldn't really necessarily understand the different parts of it. Number one is the static variable or class variable. As it has been mentioned before, the class or static variables will be shared with all objects of that class. Static variables are initialized only once at the start of the program's execution. All instances or objects of this class will have the same static variables in common. Number two is the instance variable. The instance variable is going to be the hardest to understand right now. But when I get into constructor classes, this will be much easier to understand. One of the cool things about an instanced variable is that an instanced object contains the value of its instanced variables without affecting any of the other objects. Number three is the method variable. This is the local variable is only used within this method. Okay, let's turn away from some confusing stuff and look at something a little bit easier to understand. Let's look at arithmetic. I'm going to discuss arithmetic operators and basic precedence order. 
This is how Java looks at math problems and in what order Java will deal with math, which is very important not only for the mathematics side, but because the idea of precedence will reoccur in several other places, and it's important that as a Java programmer you understand the concept. The basic math operators look a little different than what I use in everyday math, but are pretty standard in the world of computers. The only one that may be new to many people is the modulus operator, and I will deal with that specifically at a later time. The order of precedence is multiplication, division, and modulus first, then addition and subtraction second. In the case of all operators present being equal in precedence, then Java will begin on the left-hand side and calculate towards the right. Let's take a look at test math Java program. Take a look at this. Uh, this program does a simple math test. What are the answers going to be? You need to run the program and see if you are correct uh, at guessing what the answers are. And that will help you understand the math precedence. You can change the order of precedence with the use of parentheses. The innermost parentheses will always go first. And if groups of parentheses are on the same level, they're active on from left to to write. My suggestion is that you go back into the testmath.java program and that you play with it with a few calculations, uh, particularly the last three, and see for yourself the effect of changing the order of precedence with parentheses. In the next episode, I will continue to discuss primitive variables. Don't forget to check out the links below, especially the links for the homework. It's important that you see and do in order to learn Java effectively. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this to be helpful and educational. Until next time, this is H.S. John, and I'll see you around.